everybody, it's Tim Hepworth here with Fly Fishing Bover Outfitters and Thursday Night Live Fly Tying, and I'm here to bring you another quick tie. Uh, today we're going to be going through the Dirty Hippie Fly. This guy here makes something looking a little bit like that. We want to thank Rocky Mountain Fly Shop for sponsoring this quick tie for you guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this video, and uh, every time, if you click that little um, bell icon, every time we have a new video, it'll show up for you, and you will be able to check it out. Well, without further ado, why don't we head on over to the vise and get started on this fly. I'm going to be tying out of this guy here, Season 5, Episode 11. Already on Episode 11, um, yeah, season's flying by. So what we have here is we have a number 2 Tiemco 5263 hook. I'm going to be tying um, with some brown UTC in 140. And I am going to start off by, you can see I got a cone set already on this, uh, this hook. And this is a little bit different style of probably what you've imagined um, tying with a cone. This cone's not going to be up at the head of the fly. It's actually going to sit back mid-fly. Um, this is this is a pattern designed by Charlie Craven, who is, yeah, he's created this to kind of have a bulky head, swim a little different. And um, yeah, so we're going to show you how to tie this. So I'm going to take some of this lead wire we have in your kit. We're going to put a few wraps down. This is more, it is going to add a little bit of weight, but it's also going to help secure um, this cone from moving around too much has something to press back against so I'm just gonna clip that out there don't use good scissors I'm using a, a dull pair of scissors to do that here I'm gonna make I'm gonna bring that kind of right in there and I want to bring my cone back against it so how I'm gonna measure where I want to tie this in is I want to come back until I'm left with about a quarter of the overall hook shank in front of that cone and once I find the place where I think that's good I'll pull the cone out of the way I'm gonna grab my thread get to get it started just in front of that lead wire I can snip out that tag end. I'll grab that wire so it doesn't move on me. And then I'm going to put a whole bunch of wraps down on top of it and over to the back of it and then back up and over top. We're going to kind of go back and forth a few times, just making sure that we can secure that lead wire from moving around. I'm going to double check this one more time. Yeah, that's in a good spot there. <clears throat> Come back forward. What I'm going to do before I move on from this position is I'm going to add just a little bit of UV resin on this so that it won't go anywhere on me. I'm just gonna put a little coating. This is just some solarized bone dry. They'll soak into those wraps really nice. Oop, that one's dead, we'll try a different one. We'll hit that and just cure it down really good. And then we're gonna slide that cone back up against there. I'm gonna take a few thread wraps rearward. Now I'm gonna center that cone so it's kind of level on there. Now this is kind of a little bit of a tricky part, but you're gonna hold onto that cone, pull it back, and just let your thread come to in front of it. So I didn't pull super tight when I did that. I'm just pulling enough um, tension to pull my thread in front of it. And so you can see that that cone's gonna stay quite level. The other reason we have this cone in here is it's gonna brace all the materials we put up against it and are gonna hopefully flare it up a little bit as well. <clears throat> the first thing we're gonna put in here is we got a whole bunch of different flash in your bag. So we got some um, bronze colored flash. So I'm gonna double this over. No real um, no real method per se on how much we put of this flash in. You can just kind of choose. I'm gonna do a couple of strands of each one. Um, I'm gonna wrap these around my thread, bring these up on top, start to secure it down. And I, and I do want them to stay a little bit separated onto each side of the fly. So this is gonna kind of show through the material but still up on top of the hook shank, not down below. So to the sides, they're all gonna kind of look wild here for a moment. We got some uh, clear colored crystal flash here. We're gonna tie in a few strands of that. These guys here. These ones aren't quite as long, so I'm just gonna tie them in in front. And we're gonna trim all these to length when we trim the other materials as well. Just be sure not to accidentally get any of that other flash hooked in there. There we go. I'll trim out those little tags. And we do have a little bit of gold flash as well in your kit, so you might as well grab a piece of that. I'm not gonna put too much of this in. I'll just put one strand each side. Every little bit of flash here is just gonna add a little bit more to the overall appearance of that fly. So at this point, we should just have a whole bunch of flash in here. I'm gonna pull it all together and kind of pull it back and down. We'll trim that all up to length here in a moment. I'm just gonna grab my hair clip so I can grab this and kind of pull it all out of the way and might leave me alone for a little bit. Um, next material we're gonna go to is we have a piece of marabou. Okay, now we've 
done this in the past, actually, a couple patterns ago where we palmered this on a fly, and that's what we're gonna do here. So I'm gonna pull, find the very tip of this feather. But be careful when you're pulling that you don't tear any of it down. I'm gonna find the tip. I'm gonna tie in that very tip, pointing the underside of the feather, which is the underside concave piece of the feather, back down the fly. I'm gonna tie in that stem. I'm gonna really make sure I get that locked in. I can trim out that front of the stem. And now <clears throat> the stem on this marabou is very, uh, very fragile. So you don't wanna pull hard on this or it's gonna break on you and you kinda of have to start the process over. I'm gonna advance my thread forward just a few wraps. I'm gonna moisten my fingers if you got some water or just use a little saliva. I'm gonna encourage those feather portions to go rearward as I start wrapping forward. And I'm gonna wrap, kind of just palmering forward, evenly spaced, just kind of touching, try not to trap any of those uh, fibers of the feather. I'm just gonna do this as I go forward. And it's okay if we're coming forward because we're gonna take some thread wraps back up over top of that. And once we get into that kind of thicker portion of the stem of the fly, I can feel it's on now. I'm gonna work my thread through the feather and tie that off. Pull down nice and hard, do a few wraps behind, get another wrap in front of it. You're gonna probably trap a few pieces down, but that's okay, we'll work them out here in a moment. And then you're gonna trim out that stem. So I'm gonna be left with something that looks like this. Now, although we have palmered this, we're gonna actually draw all of that marabou to the top half portion of the hook shank. So I'm actually gonna pull up, and again, I'm gonna moisten my fingers a little bit. I'm gonna pull up on this and just start taking thread wraps back. So what that's gonna do is it's gonna force this marabou to stay just on the top portion of the hook shank, but it's still gonna be around each of the edges. So I'm gonna bring that right back again, kind of up against the edge of that cone and take some thread wraps forward. It's kind of laying some groundwork for my space here. And that's what I should be left with for right now. We're not gonna be trimming that marabou at all. We'll trim the next materials that come, but that little bit of moisture will help slick it back and kind of keep it out of the way. I had a little bit of the stem of that marabou on my hook shank. Just gonna trim that out so it's not too much of a bump. And then we're gonna get going to our next material. So we're gonna be working, um, there's different materials that could be substituted in this fly for this next portion. We're gonna be using um, Isl Icelandic sheep wool um, is what we're gonna tie with. Uh, other options are you could use EP fibers, you could um, even use some um, Senyo's laser dub, something a little bit longer in that sense, or predator fiber, something like that. But we're gonna use some of this uh, yellow and then tan um, Icelandic sheep wool. So kind of a, a little bit of a funny material to work with. We are gonna actually be cutting and kind of tapering this, so it's not super important what the ends look like. I'm just gonna separate a good good size clump off of here. This fly is meant to be tied very sparse and that's some of the reason um, for the way it's tied is just to keep it super light and getting rid of moisture when it comes out of the water really quick. So the first thing I wanna do is once I got kind of near the end here in this clump, I'm gonna cut it. So I wanna square it up. Now this <clears throat> initial yellow color, I want to stay on the top portion of the fly and then when I tie in the tan underneath, I want it to be on the bottom portion of the fly. I'm actually gonna tie it in in reverse though. So I'm gonna come in like this. I'm gonna put the butt of it up against those other, um, that marabou feather. I'm gonna take a thread wrap over top back down here. Now don't worry about this little chunk here. I've actually put that in there, hoping to create a little bit more bulk in this head. So I'm gonna take a couple thread wraps here. I'm gonna flip it upside down and kind of see, yeah, I got pretty decent coverage. If you need to use your thumb to spread it out a little bit before you put more wraps on it, you can do that as well. So you do want it to spread around to those edges. Now I'm gonna finish with this hanging upside down. Now before I go ahead and uh, push it back down the fly, I'm actually gonna go ahead and go to my tan color and I'm gonna grab an equal size clump to what I used on the bottom. You're going to get it lined up like you did the other one. There's quite a bit of fluff in the end of this one, so I'm going to pull a little bit of that out, a little bit of under fur. And then we're going to do the same thing. We're going to cut that off even. Sorry, I'm just trying to get the right portion here. It doesn't really matter what the portion is as long as it's fairly equal to the other color. So on this one, I'm going to come here. I'm going to square this off. So it's squared off. I'm going to tie it in in the exact same way, just on the underside. 
I'm gonna take a couple wraps and then I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure that I have it evenly spaced out around the hook, just like I did with the yellow. So it should be pushed up right against the yellow. Like so. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a couple of thread wraps forward from that tie-in point. Pull nice and tight. I'm gonna bring this back up to normal. Now I'm gonna separate those materials which is the top portion and the bottom portion of the fly. I'm gonna draw them back like so. I'll get a look, make sure I got pretty good coverage there. And then I'm gonna, from this position, I'm gonna take a wrap over both of them like so, nice and tight. This is why we're using a little bit heavier thread here too. It's because we want to um, be able to really pull nice and tight and secure these down. Now you're gonna see, I'm gonna draw this material pulling it back like so, and that's gonna pull it right underneath and kind of around that hook. So now this is a really, this looks really long right now. We're not gonna use all this material. This is where I'm gonna start trimming this kind of into the shape of a, a bait fish pattern. So I want the tail to be roughly the same length as the overall hook shank, kind of out the back of the fly. <clears throat> so we wanna make sure when we pull those materials in and around the hook that we got enough coverage to cover up all the previous materials we put in. I'm gonna be left with kind of that appearance there, okay? Now what I'm gonna do with my scissors is while I'm holding back on this, <clears throat> I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna start my taper, not the full length. So if I'm overall hook shank or overall fly length is gonna be back here, I'm gonna start my scissors back here on the bottom, start making little cuts and just slide my scissors back until I get my sizing here. And I can put a little moisture on the fly and bring it back, check it again. You're gonna check for length and you want a little bit of a taper to that. So I'm gonna start tapering a little bit sooner again when I do this next cut on the white portion on the bottom. I'm gonna start back here a little bit, taper, taper, taper. Till I get to the top. And I like that size there. When all the, when it's in the water and all the materials are kind of stuck together, you can, if you draw it back like that, you're gonna get the overall shape of what you're looking at. So we tied that little bit of extra bulk in the body so you can see that there. When you let go, you're gonna see how this uh, appears like this. Now when I go to the head here, we've got a little bit of this um, dubbing fiber here. You want something that's uh, got a little bit of flash in it. You could use crystal flash, um, crystal dubbing. You could use um, ice dub. There's all sorts of different dubbing you could use here, but we're gonna grab just some kind of smaller chunks and I'm gonna start by stacking it on top of itself so I can see kind of the overall length of the fibers. And once I do, I'm gonna kind of roll them in my finger a little bit like this. And I'm gonna tie it in with not equal portions. So I'm not gonna tie it in um, all the way back. Some of this is gonna comb out, but I'm trying to leave the fibers nice and long to build a pretty nice head here. So I'm gonna put a, a, a chunk right up on top. So when I fold this back, you can see kind of where it's gonna come to. So I'm gonna start with a piece there. I'm gonna grab another clump of equal size, do the same thing on the bottom, roll it up a little bit. Like so. Now I'm gonna repeat that. Only this time am I gonna do it on the sides but I'm gonna grab a little bit for the sides as well. So we're gonna cover up a little bit of our work here. Come up to this side, do the same thing. The head is kind of the time consuming portion of this fly, but put in the work, it'll look good. Put a thread wrap on the side piece. And now when I flip it up like so, I'm gonna push all that material back, work my thread through to the front portion of that, like so. And then all we're gonna do is we're gonna repeat the process one more time on this front portion, but we're not gonna do the sides, we're just gonna do the tops and bottoms, and we're gonna use a little bit bigger, uh, bigger chunk. So I'm gonna grab a little bit heftier chunk of dubbing, stack it, roll it a little bit, like so. Tie that just behind the eye of the hook. 
get a couple of wraps in, flip it upside down. Going to repeat that process. <clears throat> Might be a little much there, like so. Tie that in, one wrap, two wrap. And now the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this rearward, work my thread through. I can pull out kind of any uh, extra clump that's in there. And I'm just gonna take a few thread wraps back now, creating a little bit of a dam against that material. It should start to kind of force it rearward a little bit and you wanna get just a little bit of a bite on it so you can create a nose and kind of force all the material back. Now from here, now that I've got that, I'm gonna do a quick whip, whip finish here and I'm gonna stick some eyes on, which we all gave in your kit as well. We're gonna use some UV resin to do that. Come in here, whip finish this fly. I'm gonna put some resin right up on top here so I'm not too worried about that. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here at the nose, use a little bit of that solar as bone dry, right at the head of the fly. Hear that. Just like so. And now how I'm gonna put these eyes in is I'm gonna come, kind of place it, uh, flip your vise so you can, you can see this, this side of the fly. I always like a little trip, uh, trick I like to do is I like to grab both the eyes and stick them on the back of my hand. So I come like that, I got both eyes in the back of my hand, then I always have them right convenient where I can grab them. I'm gonna use just a little bit of solar eyes, thin hard formula. I'm gonna put just a dab into that dubbing sure it stays kind of in that one spot. Then I'm gonna grab the eye. I'm gonna place it on the edge of where that was. Then I like to go over and grab a pair of scissors or a bodkin and just kind of press it down and get it to where you want it to sit. And I actually like to keep a little bit of pressure on it as I cure it. And then like you can see there, it's cured that eye right into there. I'll come over to the other side, I'll repeat the process. Just one little dab, you kind of let it soak into that material a little bit. Then repeat that, stick the eye on there. I just like to kind of set it on and then I'll grab and press it in. And cure it. And that should do a pretty good job of staying in there as it's bound right through that material. Now kind of as a last option, what I like to do to just to create a little bit of a, a different appearance on this fly. So I'm gonna come in here with a marker. I'm just gonna make some barring marks on the head with this brown marker. And I'm just gonna keep going right up those materials all the way out to the tail. So I'm just gonna give the imitation of a immature bait fish or immature brown trout in this color scheme. I'm gonna darken up the head a little bit. So it looks like so. Now when I pull all that back together, so that's what it's gonna look like in the water. It has all the material here, sorry. Like so. That's what the fish is gonna see on top, on the bottom. There you have it guys. That is your dirty hippie streamer. Give it a try, a little bit different tying style, putting the weight in the middle of the fly, um, using that cone head, uh, a little different, but I guarantee you it's worth fishing. So why don't you put a few in your fly box, different colors and give them a try. All right guys, it's been Tim Hepworth here with Fly Fishing Board Outfitters and Thursday Night Live Fly Tying. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this video. And until next week, be cool, be someone's reason to smile today.